In this video, I'm going to answer a very simple question, which is, what the hell does this complete mess mean? What does an infrared spectrum tell you, and how do you read an IR graph? So let's start by taking a closer look at our IR graph and breaking it down to see what do these wiggly lines actually mean. So the first thing that you need to do is split the whole thing into two. So I'm going to draw a line at wave number of 1,500, like so. On the right, we have the fingerprint region. So just like a fingerprint is unique to one person, the fingerprint region is unique to one chemical. So if you match this fingerprint region to the fingerprint region of a known substance in a database, you could use that to identify a sample where you have an exact match. On the opposite side, above 1,500, we have the functional group region, or as it's also known, the diagnostic region. And this region has various points in it that stand out, which we call peaks. And to understand an IR spectrum, you need to work out what each peak is actually telling you. The peaks in the functional group region help you work out what functional groups are present in your substance. There are also pre peaks in the fingerprint region that are indicative of a functional group, but you need to be very careful in analyzing these. And so we can see that we've got various peaks on this diagram. And the question we're really looking at is, for example, what is this one? What is this one? And also, if we look in the fingerprint region, there's another peak standing out there. And that's going to be indicative of one functional group, but only indicative because the fingerprint region isn't in the functional group region. So it's not telling you functional groups very strongly. So you have to be very skeptical when you're making conclusions about the fingerprint region. And in one of the examples we look at, we'll see why that's the case. And so we need to work out some way of actually telling what these peaks mean. And to do this, we use an infrared spectroscopy table. And these are also known as correlation tables. And I've included here a simple table that can help us identify functional groups. This is an abbreviated table to help you solve the worked examples that I've prepared. And you can actually find some absolutely enormous tables online with every functional group you could ever need. In this video, we'll focus on identifying the basic common functional groups. This table shows the wave numbers where you would tend to find these functional groups. The exact peak depends on the exact substance. For example, the peak for the C to O bond is slightly different depending on whether you've got a primary or a secondary alcohol and an extended large table that I'll link to in the description will help you distinguish between those. But for now, we'll just focus on being able to identify the general functional group that's present rather than looking at how it's behaving in the individual specific molecule case. And we can spot some other really key bits of information. So if we look at the OH bond, you've actually got two different things going on. In an alcohol, the peak tends to be much narrower, occurring in this region here. Whereas in an acid, it's very much larger, and so you would see a very, very broad peak. And it is worth always remembering that functional groups give different peaks in different substances. So if you were looking at an alcohol or looking at an acid and you saw an OH group, they're, they're going to look different in the spectrum, and you have to be aware of that. And things will make a lot more sense when we look at some worked examples. And as we go through the worked examples, I'm going to keep this table up and present so that we'll constantly be referring back to this table. So let's start by looking at our first worked example, which is going to be the one that we've been looking at previously in the background. We're going to actually work out what this spectrum is telling you. So when I start to do the analysis, I always draw a line at 1,500 to help me work out which is the fingerprint region and which is the functional group region. Then we look in the functional group region and we can see various peaks. There's a peak there and there's a peak there. So we need to start interpreting and understanding what these peaks are actually telling us. And so this is where we refer back to the data that we had earlier. And we can see on the left that this peak is very, very broad. And so we've got a very broad peak. We look at the bottom, it's about 3,000. So we've got a broad peak around about 3,000. And that's kind of matching up with our OH for an acid. It's not an alcohol OH group because that would be further up and it would be a much narrower peak. 
We've also got something going on here. And so if we follow these numbers, we've got 2,000. Then we're going backwards to 1,900, 1,800, and that's going to be 1,700. There's something happening around 1,700 with a fairly narrow peak. We've got a fairly narrow peak about 1,700-ish, and so that's going to be about here. So that's going to be our C double bond O. There is also some peaks in the fingerprint region, and this one is roughly where you would expect a C bond O to be. Because if you look at our table, there's your C bond O. It's in the right sort of place. But because we've crossed over this line and are now in the fingerprint region, we're going to have to be very skeptical about this. This is why I've put maybe. And I'll show you an example where you're going to have to be very, very skeptical because it's actually going to lead you in the wrong direction. And we'll look at that in just a second. So this substance is actually ethanoic acid. And it's unsurprising why we're getting these with ethanoic acid because these are the functional groups that you actually have in ethanoic acid. So let's look at another example and practice a bit more how this actually works. So we've got a completely different spectrum. And with experience, you'll be able to look at that and almost instantly tell the functional groups because these are very common ones. So let's look at our first one here and our second one here. These are our two peaks we need to focus on analyzing. We've got our data here. This peak is corresponding to this here. It's in about the right place, around 3,000. So we're getting a C bond H. Of course, we, we're analyzing a hydrocarbon. That's going to come up because you're going to have hydrogen and carbon. So a C bond H is generally your least useful thing that you find on an infrared spectrum. It's often just telling you something very obvious. This peak here is much more useful. You've got the narrow peak in the same place as the last one, around about 1,700 vague kind of area, and you should instantly be able to recognize that as your C double bond O. This may be a C bond O. It's in the fingerprint region, so you're going to have to be skeptical about that. This is actually an ester, and in an ester, you've, of course, got your C double bond O, and so this is giving us the right answer. And we can identify an ester by seeing a spectrum that looks like this. Let's look at another example. So we've got something very different here. This is propanone, and I'm telling you that straight away. And we've got a peak here. This is our C double bond O, which is totally consistent with having propanone. This is not C double bond O. When you look at it, you might think that that peak corresponds to C bond O, but in fact, it doesn't. And that illustrates why you've got to be very careful about drawing too much information out of the fingerprint region. This region is the functional group region for a reason, and this is where you're getting your best data. Now let's look at another example where we can actually use this fact where you've got the alcohol being narrow and the acid being very wide. And so you can see in your ethanoic acid that you have a very wide peak, whereas on your propanol, which is your alcohol, you have a very narrow peak. And so you can actually tell different substances apart very quickly. If you looked at a spectrum like this, you know it's not going to be a carboxylic acid. And if you looked at a spectrum like this, you can instantly tell it's definitely not an alcohol. And when you combine infrared spectroscopy with other techniques, you can identify substances very, very effectively and very quickly. Though the strength of infrared spectroscopy is with the functional group region, you can often spot very easily some of the functional groups that are present. So I hope this video was helpful to you and you've got a good basic introduction in how to read some basic infrared spectrums. And finally, thank you very much for watching.